Good afternoon and welcome to the 21st annual exhibit of hydrogen fuel cells technologies and we've added batteries to the mix. We've been discussing innovations in the field. There are always innovations. Uh, one of the innovations that we're always uh, waiting for is the storage issue. For mobile applications it's very, very important. Um, and we have a new take on that. I've seen a lot of different technologies but I've never seen this before so it's going to be an exciting conversation. Uh, please sit down and have a drink. The drinks are on the house and help me welcome Professor Takashi, uh, Takashi Nakamura from Tohoku University. He is representing uh, Ryoden Trading Company and his colleague from the same company, Yasufumi Sakakibara, who's senior manager there. Please welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you. And I, I, I just love people who bring gifts. <laughs> so <laughs> um, I suppose uh, before we get into the technology, everyone's interested in seeing that. Uh, let's start with the company itself. Um, uh, uh, Ryoden Trading Company, where is it located? What do you people do? What sort of ranges of technologies are you interested in? <laughs> I think it's better to answer from the uh, Sakakibara. Okay, okay. So, certainly. So, we are a solution provider, and uh, uh, right now, we focus on the uh, energy area. Mm -hmm. So, we would like to expand the business uh, with uh, MG2 product. Yeah, mm -hmm. right now. Okay. Um, now, when I saw this, um, uh, the title of our talk is Advanced Energy System Using uh, Magnesium Hydride as an Energy Storage. Yeah. I've seen sodium borohydride, I've seen the, uh, you know, the metals, yes. all sorts of stuff there. They all have their specific advantages, but what I've seen most of all is that they come and they go. Uh, so, a lot of transitional suggestions on how we store hydrogen, uh, particularly for mobile applications, not simply compressing it. Mm -hmm. You've got something new. Okay. The, at first, I introduced the magnesium hydride. Mm -hmm. It's probably the most of you, it's not, sounds not so new, the magnesium hydride, as an uh, energy storage, mm -hmm. but you can see here we we have the magnesium hydride here. We can handle by hand. That means it's very very safety. No react in the room temperature with humidity. Yeah, so that's very good benefit. Yes, actually. So if I put into the Water, of course, start to uh, generate the hydrogen. Of course, we need a little bit of technique, yeah, but that, that's a good point here. And this size, uh, the magnesium hyd hydride, can uh, contain the 10, uh, sorry, 20 liter per, uh, 20 liter of hydrogen. And if they react the water the, about uh, twice, uh, 40 liter per hydrogen we can generate. Mm -hmm. So yeah. uh, probably the most people know we can uh, produce uh, electricity the, as the renewable energy. Mm -hmm. It's uh, using an, uh, photovoltaic and wind farm. Yeah, but the, to create the smart grid system, mm -hmm. the very, very important essential issue is the storage of energy. The energy uh, should be saved, the storage. Uh, the electric power 
cannot store it directly. Mm -hmm. We need a battery, but of course uh, we can use a battery, but not so big power, and also the uh, not so convenient. So the this magnesium hydrate once they react the water, we can produce the hydrogen and. Uh, after the generate the hydrogen, we can use as energy. So the if we want, and we try to show how to use mm -hmm. using the, the portable fuel cell. Yeah. So this is a, an auxiliary power unit or a portable uh, unit uh, to create electrical current. Oh. Oh. Using magnesium hydride and water, is that right? Yes. And this time, oh, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> yeah. So this side is the water. Uh, the, we put in the water, and this side, not like this, but put into the magnesium hydride and. Only lock, shut, lock, and, and uh, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> put, put in the, the fuel and lock. And oh, sorry. And just push button, so we can generate. Unfortunately, the uh, actually we can. The generate here. It's a uh, it's a forbidden the the office. But uh, you're not. That, that is, it's not approved as yet in in. in no, 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 no. It's in Japan. It's no no problem. Okay. So already we can show. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. But not only here. Mm -hmm. Just here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. We've had this issue of uh, almost every demonstration device. When I look back over 20 years, even the safe, safest hydrogen technologies, they wouldn't let us take it in the building at the beginning. Um, <laughs> uh, then uh, direct methanol power supplies, they wouldn't let us operate it in the building for the longest time. It has taken a long time yeah. uh, to school people and educate people on uh, the acceptance of this technology. If you are considering mobile applications, yeah. for example, um, uh, do do you have, um, uh, can you operate mobile technologies using magnesium hydride in Japan right yeah. now? Uh, uh, yes, uh, we already have tried to use them uh, for the Biku. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's not so, still not so long time, mm -hmm. uh, not the long distance, mm -hmm. the, the size is not so enough, mm -hmm. but we can do that, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's uh, no problem, and also, the, uh, especially in the, for the mobile vehicle, it's a small one or the mobile bicycle. Mm. Is it also with the possible to yeah, use? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's very. This the materials. It's a very good the storage, very safe. Mm -hmm. So that's a big and uh, nice and the most and the uh, uh, essential point, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the, we are now the developing the how to apply. Mm -hmm. And one more very important point. So after the react with the water, so what we have, so that's the magnesium hydroxide. So that means after that, we have to re return to magnesium hydride. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that we need to recycle mm -hmm. the magnes uh, magnesium. Mm -hmm. So the also that point, we are now the uh, under developing the essentially we can do that, but uh, not the large scale. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's on uh, um, our present station. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Th these are two fundamental questions whenever you get a new type of storage technology. The first one uh, just occurred to me, though, 
uh, is, uh, here we have this uh, chunk here. Uh, batteries themselves, if you leave them dormant for a while, they lose their charge. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, if I'm counting on storing energy and I happen to have this thing around here, <laughs> yeah. uh, cookie size, and I know how many uh, 40 watts I'll generate mm -hmm. for an hour or whatever. I, I'm counting on this energy. If it's a battery, you might not be able to rely on it a year and a half or two years later. How quickly will this substance deteriorate if I just keep it in a uh, dry um, package there? Does it stay stable over a longer period uh, of time? For, yeah. So this type of the lapping is not so good. Uh -huh. So always then they penetrate the uh, humidity mm. or the even in the air oxygen. So, of course, uh, not 100% destroyed, but uh, not so good. So normally, we cover the very good uh, high grade package, mm -hmm. and it's a no penetrate the humidity and the oxygen. Mm. So, it's uh, that we can keep not. Uh, forever, but <laughs> we can keep to the wrong time, mm -hmm. so no yes. problem. So, according to our experience, uh, we have five five years experience. Mm -hmm. So, uh, uh, according to our experience, uh, there is no uh, change. Mm -hmm. No change. Yeah. Okay. So that's a huge advantage, obviously. Yes. Uh, one major question, of course, would be. Uh, you, you use magnesium, uh, that's a cost factor, and um, uh, what sort of technology do you provide in order to recover that? If you have to pay the initial investment for magnesium, it's obviously interesting to see, um, is there a recycling yeah. uh, program that is cost effective, that mm -hmm. makes this an affordable technology? So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the, as you know, the magnesium, the alloy, it's not so cheap. <laughs> mm -hmm. So the many people hesitate to use. But and the, our uh, recycling system, which now under developing, it's very costable. The, the uh, it's better than the produce uh, uh, original the. Magnesium uh, production process mm. from the uh, do you know the pigeon process? It's a very the classical the magnesium uh, production process. Mm. It's a very high uh, how to say the generate the carbon dioxide. Mm -hmm. But our system it's using the uh, plasma. Uh, furnace, mm -hmm. it's very the, uh, effective and also the high efficiency, energy efficiency. And that process, we can produce the magnesium powder. Mm -hmm. So, very easy to prepare the magnesium hydride. Mm -hmm. That's also the good uh, point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, really, the we if we use uh, the magnesium hydride, we have to combine uh, to make a uh, combination on the, with a recycling system of mm -hmm. magnesium hydride. Mm -hmm. That's a uh, key point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I should add, if there are questions from the audience, uh, just raise your hand and we'll uh, uh, try to address them. Oh, one question here. Hello, my yeah. name is Markus Tegel from Fraunhofer IFAM. Um, how do you stop the reaction once it has started? <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, for example, when you started your um, power generating device and then you decide, oh, now you need to stop producing electricity, how do you stop it? Uh, yes, uh, that is a good question. Yeah. So, we have uh, some technique. So, we are controlling the uh, water uh, quantity and also uh, uh, this uh, size of uh, magnesium uh, quantity. So both of the quanti uh, quantity control, uh, we can control the uh, systems right now. Any other questions that we're missing here? Uh, one, uh, we're slowly running out of time, but of course I'm always interested in um, what uh, precise markets 
this is addressed to. Um, when we talk about energy storage, uh, in Germany we have a massive problem because there's potential wind energy in the north. Oh, yeah. uh, we're talking that. about, you know, uh, uh, hundreds and hundreds of gigawatts of yeah. power. Um, another issue is a simple mobile application. Mm -hmm. These are different scales. Yeah. Um, so, um, uh, but when we think about cities uh, and infrastructures where right now they have pollution issues, uh, even in Berlin during the summer, um, the pollution is so high that according to European law, people should stop driving. They really, it's, it's, it's an issue. So are you thinking of addressing mobile applications with this? Are you uh, looking at a bigger picture? Is there enough magnesium uh, to address the, the, the gigawatt issue? Yeah. Uh, or is it uh, just a utility source for smaller niche yeah. markets? Uh, actually, the uh, final target, it's not, I, don't, I don't know exactly the gigawatt, but uh, the, at least our plan, it's making a megawatt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's of course it's uh, the uh, uh, produce a uh, big size system. It's a little bit of a problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's possible. And also the uh, another uh, point, we can prepare the one even the one megawatt. It's several. And uh, equipment that control the actually they are smart grid. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So the always people think the megawatt the, or gigawatt, uh, but as you know, the control the high, the big energy. Mm -hmm. It's not so easy. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So the I think it's better to control at first the. A uh, few thousand watt, mm. and next, and the ten times, and also finally, it's the, probably the. I hope the one megawatt, <laughs> something like that amount. Well, we've uh, run out of time. We should continue this conversation at your booth, of course. Uh, Ryoden is located at C56 uh, in that direction there. Uh, it is an important development, particularly the recycling yeah. uh, uh, technology that you offer, which makes this an affordable approach to energy storage. And I think that's the uh, message we should like to leave you with. Uh, it's been a pleasure talking to you, that's Professor some... Takashi Nakamura. Wednesday. Uh, yeah, it's been a pleasure talking to yeah. you, and of course, uh, to you as well, Yasufimi. Uh, yeah, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you. Certain thank wonders you. do come from Canada still. Uh, just look at the last election. Uh, everyone is thrilled. But there are other miracles as well. Uh, we'll be talking to Eric Dendhoff, uh, who's president and CEO of one of my favorite organizations, the Canadian Hydrogen and Fuel Cell Association. And they'll be talking about Canada's fuel cell sector and its growth trajectory. Grow, grow, grow. We'll be back in a minute. Thank mm.